Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm here to make a quick video about what's on my Nintendo Switch in regards to custom firmware apps and emulators. This is going to be part one of a series about what's on my Nintendo Switch. I actually already recorded this video once but as I was recording it my new microphone came in the mail so you're going to get the updated version hopefully uh, with a bit less rambling this time. So without further ado let's get into it. So. I'm over here on my Nintendo Switch. I have a custom theme going. I'm using Alex Kidd. Hold the R button. My DualShock 4 is what I use. And press the A button. So in this case, it's also circle. Holding R. And ta-da! Here is my custom firmware menu. First up on the menu, we have Checkpoint. And this is just a really simple and straightforward save manager. So you can back up, restore saves, and it also has cheat functionality, but uh, that's that for this one. Oh, trying to not ramble too much. And next, DBI. This is incredibly useful. Anyone that has custom firmware atmosphere on their Nintendo Switch needs this program. You can browse contents on your SD card. You can run an MTP responder, which, which allows you to connect to your computer via USB and access all the files that are on your SD card without having to take your SD card out of the Switch or reboot into Hikadi. You can also clean up orphan files that sometimes other installers like Tinfoil do. You can browse installed applications and you can uninstall them or you can uninstall even updates that are giving you trouble. This is the way you want to do it if you installed an update but you're having some troubles. You don't want to go through the regular switch menu and uninstall the program and then reinstall it. Switch kind of keeps a memory about things like that. So anyways, uh, exit, moving on. Next up we have, oh, did it crash? Yeah, it crashed. Oh, that happens sometimes. Let's get back into my menu here. But all good, the Switch didn't crash, just the menu when I was exiting out. Devolution X, this is a very good port of Diablo 1. And Edison SE, that's another save manager and cheat manager and editor. Final Burn Alpha, it's an arcade emulator, supports a lot of systems, it's really good. I wouldn't say it's better than MAME and Retroarch, it just, some, maybe some games will work better in this, some games will work better in Retroarch, so I like to have both. Flycast, it's a Dreamcast emulator. It works a little bit better than the one that comes with Retroarch, but the one that comes with Retroarch tends to work just fine in most cases. If you're having trouble there or it's slow, run this Flycast. Goldleaf, also incredibly useful tool. Wow, that green is bright. It tends to change color every time you open it. Let's see what color we get this time. All right much better. So you can explore SD card contents, you can connect to your remote PC, and you can manage console contents like uh, install games and such, browse the internet, I never touch because my Switch stays in airplane mode all the time, no matter what, and I am afraid of getting a new Switch dock that has a LAN adapter built into it because of that. So next, GZ Doom, incredibly good Doom launcher. It allows you to run all the latest mods and everything, including Brutal Doom. Oh god, I love Brutal Doom. It's so much fun on Switch. Completely underrated. I'd say better than Doom Eternal. Although, I'm still working my way through Doom, Doom Eternal. I love that game. JKSV, this is the top rated save manager because it allows you access to everything, even device saves, like your Animal Crossing Island. You can back that up, save it, transfer it to another friend switch that has custom firmware, and all kinds of things. So also here. So these are different save files that are on the system for special programs like the Switch Online and Animal Crossing. Regular saves will be saved in your profile, like here. Hey, and moving back. I tend to do a backup of all my saves before I update uh, Atmosphere. Ah, Melon DS. It's a decent DS emulator. If you don't have a 3DS or DS, it works, but it's not so good. Like, it it does the job, but it's not perfect. It tends to stutter quite a bit, and I don't really like the layout or playing a DS game with Joy-Cons. I usually break out my old 3DS for that. 
right? NX shell, this is just another file manager, lets you copy paste. I have all these different file managers because they all do different things well and bad and yeah, so it's good to have some redundancy. NX themes, this is your theme manager, so you have a whole bunch of themes I can change. It doesn't really let you preview them. Uh, something to be noted, uninstall theme, very, very important before you update your custom firmware. Every day, someone posts on the Reddit, on the Switch discussion area, about, I can't boot in, I updated my atmosphere, what do I do? And it always comes back to themes. I actually avoided themes for the longest time because of it, but now I'm having fun. Open Beats of Rage, so Beats of Rage, just port, works really, works really, really well, I love this. I use it to play Streets of Rage 2 and 3 Remake. Uh, open Jazz NX. If you don't know Jazz Jackrabbit, it's an old DOS game. It's freaking awesome. Portable Final Burn Alpha Neo. So it's just another Final Burn Alpha arcade emulator. It has a different ROM set than the other one. I'm actually not sure if they're compatible. I got both of them last week, and I'm still fiddling with them, trying to figure out what the differences are. All right. PPSSPP. This is a PSP emulator. It works really, really well. It upscales, and I've had absolutely no problems with it. The, there's something weird with it where you got to set the pause button in the settings of PPSSPP, which is actually the, the home button. It brings you back home. If you don't set that, you have to basically exit out like this to get back. Quake 3 Arena, so it's just Quake 3 Arena, ported, has actually the recent update from a couple weeks ago, has gyro support, works really well. Even the DualShock 4, I use a USB adapter to connect this by Bluetooth, I don't use mission control, it works really well. Quake Spasm NX, it's a Quake 1 port, came out before the Bethesda one, it's really good, but I changed over and I use the Bethesda one now. Reboot to Payload, if you want to get back into Hikati, you can just click this and it'll get you back there in two clicks. There's a confirmation dialog. RetroArch this needs no introduction. Multi or uh, machine emulator. It has cores for all kinds of things. I'm going to do deep dives on basically all my apps later on. But for now, that. Sonic 1 port. This is by far the definitive way to play Sonic 1. Probably going to be better than the remasters next year. It's based off the iOS and Android ports, which have spin dash, widescreen support. Same thing with Sonic 2, so the best port, better. I'm sorry, M2, I love your work, but it's better than the M2. Sonic 3 Air. Sonic 3 never gets any love from Sega, but I'm so glad this is made. This is the best way to play it by far. Okay, and now we have Sonic CD. So Sonic CD, I never really cared for this game. Not so good. Next up, we have Sonic Roboblast. This is a great homebrew Sonic game made by the community. It's actually based off the original Doom engine, but it's not a Doom game. It's not just a wad with Sonic sprites in it. It's its own thing. It's really good. I recommend you try it out. Sonic Roboblast 2 Kart. Also similar, it's based off the Doom engine, but it's a kart racer like Mario Kart, and it it's a lot of fun. It works really well. You'd be surprised. Try Player. Now let's open this one up. This is a music player for Nintendo Switch. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is it sorts things by playlist or by song, and you have to make the playlist manually, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. I usually sort my music by uh, folder and then file name. So anyway, let's give you that. So there, that's going, and we can back out of this. Yep, yeah, exit. But, as you can hear, the music's still going, so it plays in the background, which is really cool. And the way you control that, bring up your plugins menu, try player, and I'm just going to pause that for now. We're going to get into that more in the deep dive video. And up here, Voyager NX. It's the Voyager Elite Force, uh, like, Quake 3 Arena engine game. It's it's actually a lot of fun. I'd say more fun than Quake 3 Arena. If you play the game, try out the Borg 8 of 8. The way he jumps. And Breeze, these are just some tools which uh, I need to update. They're for managing cheats and creating cheats. Uh, that's a whole different thing to get into. It's way beyond me. Atmosphere Updater, it's for online update, but I don't update that way. When I do update, I'll make a video about that. Daybreak, this is necessary. It comes with Atmosphere, and you use it to 
update the firmware files once you have them on your Switch. A few more things, Edison, also a save editor and a cheat editor, but uh, there's better ways for that now. The breeze is much better. And FTP, so again, if you connect by Wi-Fi, Game Card Installer lets you install your game cards. Just pretty straightforward, does what it says. I used it to install my game cards, so I don't have to carry them around anymore. Gold Leaf, old version, I need to get rid of it. GZ Doom, another launcher, just for redundancy. Joy-Con Color Switcher. When you snap your Joy-Cons on the Switch, it gives that little snap and has a little color on the side. And then when you go to the menu, it shows you the color. You can use this to change it. There's only a few options, but it's there. Keys, please. Oh, it's to get your specific console keys, but there's a better way to do that with RCM Lockpick. But, uh, we don't need that right now. You need it for more advanced things, like the Saturn emulation. Uh, MAME, I haven't been able to get this to work. I still got to fiddle with it some more. If anyone has any advice on how to make the actual MAME work, not the one in RetroArch, I would love to know. NX Locale Switcher. This one lets you change the location of your games, which also in turn changes the language. So if I load, my system setting is English right now. I'm in Japan, but if I load Metroid Dread up, it'll load in English because my system's English. You can use Locale Switcher to change the location of Metroid Dread so it'll play in Japanese, so my Japanese friends will be able to enjoy it. NX Dump Tool, another game card installer, just redundancy in case the other one stops working. Uh, this one, uh, it's just an MTP server, so I don't need that. I use DBI for it, and another PP, SSPP, I use the other launcher for it. Sys Clock Manager, it's for overclocking and management, but there is a better way to do that through the menu here and app profiles, but I'm going to get into that in another video. So, and at the very end, tinfoil installer, but I already have tinfoil installed. I just haven't cleaned that up yet because it's right here and that'll load up. All right, I think that'll do it for this video and I hope to see you in part two and I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to ask below. Thank you. See you in the next one.